going to crochet with Potter and Blue. Today we are going to do a video tutorial for this amazing vintage stitch pattern. This is called the checkerboard stitch. And I don't know if you can see how absolutely amazing that is, but I absolutely love it. This is my original swatch and I had worked the stitch a couple of times and then I just wanted to work the pale blue line represents the stitch repeat and the stitch repeat obviously where this pattern is staggered the stitch repeat takes into account let me show you close up the stitch repeat takes into account the stitch here and then staggered here if you know what I mean. So if you look on the pale blue section, I don't know if you'll be able to see, the full stitch repeat is the two rows of fans. So I did that to show you how long the stitch repeat is. And then the other thing that I did, when I was working this pattern, this sample has been blocked and it really comes to life it really becomes quite beautiful when it's blocked and I absolutely must do something with this stitch. But I also thought that it would look quite fabulous striped. So I did a second sample and this sample I haven't blocked and I don't know, <laughs> my cat's meowing at the door. I don't know if you can tell or see just how beautiful that is. And what I've done for this sample is I have changed color for every fan repeat. So not every stitch repeat, every stitch repeat is the, the gray and the peach together. So I've split the stitch repeat so that I can stripe. And I think that that looks amazing as well. And this isn't blocked and this is using an Aran weight sort of fluffy alpaca style yarn and I, I think it looks amazing. I'm going to block this sample and see how it comes up but so for today's tutorial I am going to use some more of this blue yarn. I'm not sure what the yarn is. I know that it is I do know that it is DK weight though and so I have got my yarn and I have also got my four millimeter crochet hook. We're going to start off in with multiples of 10. So that's 20 stitches. So that will be two repeats. And I'll do one more just for this tutorial. One, two. Okay, so I've got 30 stitches and then you need to add three to your multiple of 10. Okay, so we're gonna begin with row one. We are going to work one treble into the third stitch from the hook. So, one, two, three, and we're gonna work a treble. Okay, we're going to work four chains and then we're going to work a double crochet. We're going to skip four stitches and then we're going to work a double crochet into the next stitch. So one, two, three, four and then a double crochet. So you've got a little loop. Okay. Now we are going to work 
seven chains. This one's it's always tricky on the first row. Seven chains and then a double crochet in that same space. Okay, and then we're going to do that twice more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're going back into that same place, working a double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And your final double crochet. Now what you get is this kind of, it looks a bit to me, let me pull my hook out so you can see, it looks like a little fleur de lis. Let me show you what that looks like. You see you've got these three little loops. Okay. Now we're going to work four chains. And you might need to pull your, just pull that tight so that you can see where you're going. Because we're going to miss four chains. So, one, two, three, four. And we're going to work a treble into the fifth. This first row is a little bit fiddly actually just a little bit fiddly I think because you put so many stitches into this one stitch here can you see how pulled out that one stitch is it just makes it throws the rest of the beginning chain off I don't know how much to put that so chain four and then we're going to do it all again we're just going to pull our stitches a little bit so we can see Miss four, one, two, three, four, double crochet into the fifth, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and double crochet back into the same space, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My cat's just wailing at the door. I shall have to go and let her in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and double crochet in the same space. Okay, so now we've got two of our little fleur de lis. Okay, now we're going to chain four again. And I'm going to have to go and let the cat in, aren't I? One, two, three, four. And work a treble in the fifth. Chain four, one, two, three, four. Miss four, one, two, three, four. I had to go and let the cat in because she was just wailing. So, yeah, my stitches have gone a little bit splitty here, but one, two, three, four. Work a double crochet. And we're going to do our last lot of fleur de lis one two three four five six seven and a double crochet into the same space one two three four five six seven 
crochet into the same space and one more time. Okay, and you should end, you've got five chains left, you chain four and you work your final treble in that last chain. Preferably not splitty. Okay, let me show you what you should have after row one. So you have got your foundation chain and then you've got these fleur de -lis with trebles separating them. Okay, so for row two, we're going to chain one. It does not count as a stitch. We're just chaining one in order to turn. Okay, so chain one, turn your work. And we're gonna work one double crochet into the top of this beginning treble or ending treble treble that ended your round your row one we're going to work a double crochet in there okay and then we're going to chain one and we're going to work a double crochet into this first petal okay pulls it up into place then we're going to chain three and work a double crochet into the middle sort of transforms this pattern. Chain three and a double crochet into the third petal. So we've sort of pulled our petals to attention. It's a little bit like a space alien. Okay, <laughs> I don't know why I said that. We're gonna chain one and we're gonna work one double crochet into the top of this treble. And then we're going to chain one and we're going to do that all again. One double crochet into the first petal, chain three, one double crochet into the middle petal, chain three, and one double crochet into the final petal. Okay something that looks like this now and then we chain one we work a double crochet into the top of the treble we're going to chain one and we're going to do it again one double crochet into the first petal chain three one double crochet into the middle petal, chain three, and one double crochet into the last petal. Okay, and then we get to the end. This is where we, where we began with our treble into the third chain. We're gonna chain one, and we're gonna work our last double crochet into the top of that beginning chain three treble group type thing. Okay. Now, we're going to do that all over again, but we're going to do it um, in a staggered way. So you'll see what I mean as soon as I start, but that is essentially if you were doing stripes they would be your first two stripes that would be your first row of stripes and you would change color now and I kind of think that maybe the pattern was designed to be that way because it's called the checkerboard stitch I think it looks a lot better striped and I think that I will put together a little pattern to go with this tutorial that is striped because I think it shows off the pattern a lot better but let's begin with our next repeat. We're going to start this row with chain seven. We're 
we're going to turn our work and we're going to work one double crochet into that same double crochet that same space okay and then we're going to chain seven again see the cat's been at my yarn and we're going to work a double crochet into that same space again okay so we've got almost got half half a flower half a fleur de lis and we're going to leave it like that because this is going to be our stagger okay so we're going to just do two seven chain loops there we're going to chain four and we're going to work one treble into the double crochet that is in the middle petal of the round below so this one here See, this is the middle petal and this is the double crochet so we're going to work a treble into there okay we're going to chain four and we're going to work a double crochet into this double crochet that is sitting on top of the treble from the beginning okay so it's the double crochet after the petals. And now we're going to work three more petals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And a double crochet in the same place. One more time. And a double crochet in the same space. So we're doing exactly the same thing, but we're doing it just to the side. We're doing it in between the fleur de lis from the previous round. So we chain four. And we work a treble into the double crochet that's in the middle petal of the next fleur de lis. Chain four. And we do it again. We go into the double crochet that's sitting on top of the treble. We work one double crochet and then three petals. Chain seven, double crochet in the same place, chain seven, double crochet, Always make sure you've got your three petals and then we're going to chain four we're going to work a treble into the double crochet that is in the middle petal and chain four again right we're at the other end so for the ends we just do half flowers or half fleur de lis. So for this end we do chain four, we work a double crochet into that last stitch or the first stitch from the previous round. We do one petal, one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. We do a double crochet into the same space. And now we do chain three. And put one treble into that final stitch. And that counts as your two petals. Can you see how that's worked? Okay, so now we're going to chain one and turn. And we have to straighten off this next section of flowers or fleur de lis as I have taken to calling them. I don't know where I got that idea from. So, row four chained one, we've turned, we're going to work one double crochet into this first chain three space and chain three. We're going to work a double crochet into the next petal and chain one. We're going to work a double crochet into the top of the treble from the previous round chain one, double crochet into the first petal, chain three, double crochet into the second petal, chain three, you should be getting the hang of this by now, double crochet into the third petal. Okay, so we're now starting to get our We chain one, we work a double crochet into the treble, chain one, double crochet into the first petal, one, two, three, double crochet into the second petal, one, two, three, double crochet into the third petal. Chain one, double crochet into the treble, chain one, and when you get to the end, you've got your beginning two petals. You work a double crochet into the first, chain three, and a double crochet into the second. Okay, so that is your two. That's four rows with two of the flower repeats. So if I was doing stripes, I would change color again now. So I would have done these, this row here with these petals in one color, and then I would have done this second row of petals in another color. So for row five, which then after row five, we go back to row two again. So row five is the, is the final one that you need to know. We are going to chain two and we're going to turn our work and we're going to work a treble into that first, that first double crochet. We're going to chain four. And we're going to work a double crochet into the double crochet that is on top of the treble. And we're going to work our fleur de lis. Chain seven. Double crochet. Chain seven. Double crochet, chain seven. And double crochet. We're going to chain four. And we're going to work a treble into the double crochet that's in the middle 
petal. So this is essentially like row one, chain four, but it has to be repeated because row one was a foundation row. And then we're going to work a double crochet into the double crochet on top of the treble. And we're going to work another fleur de -lis. It might sound a bit confusing, but actually when you are working this, you'll be able to see where where your stitches are supposed to go. It kind of, it's quite a nice intuitive stitch. And I don't really like to do tutorials for I don't really like to do tutorials for stitches unless I find that they feel intuitive and happy in my hands. Do you know what I mean? This one just feels like it really flows nicely. So when you've done your three petals, chain four, and work a treble into the double crochet that is on the middle petal. Chain four. And the double crochet into the double crochet that is on top of the treble. And another fleur de -lis. the end we're going to chain four and we're going to work one treble into that last double crochet which was the first double crochet of the previous round so that is the end of the repeat we now go back to row two and I'm going to do row two with you because I think that the pattern needs to be finished on either a row two or a row four and rows two and four are the rows where you're straightening off your petals. I mean obviously that would probably look like quite a nice edging wouldn't it with the fleur de lis if you wanted to have the fleur de lis as a border for a blanket or the bottom of a top or something that would also look quite nice but I'll just run through row two with you again quickly so um, you could see how I would naturally finish this stitch pattern off so chain one turn one double crochet into this first stitch chain one one double crochet into the first petal chain three one double crochet into the second petal, chain three, and one double crochet into the third petal, chain one, one double crochet into the treble, that ball of yarn is getting in the way, chain one, one double crochet into the first petal, chain three, one double crochet into the second, chain three, and one double crochet into the third, chain one, double crochet into the top of the treble, chain one, a double crochet into your first petal, chain three, into your second petal, chain one, 
crochet three into your third petal, chain one and double crochet into the top of that beginning treble. And that is how I would end the pattern so that I had a straight edge along the top unless of course I wanted to do some pico in and so this is the same yarn and I, let me show you how it looks blocked and unblocked I think you can see that there, <laughs> there is such a crazy amount of difference I mean I think that the stitch looks nice perfectly pleasant unblocked but if you really wanted to go for something super lacy or make something that really has a lot of drape and looks gorgeous then I think you can't argue with how blocking brings that brings that pattern to life so that is the checkerboard stitch it is a vintage pattern and I hope that you love it as much as I do. The link to the show notes with the written pattern will be in the box below. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Let me know in the comments below. See you on the next.